So hey guys, welcome to our channel Fiction Domain. And also welcome to the another amazing story on what if Naruto was a king of Resident Evil World. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. The years was 2009 somewhere in Africa in an underground facility within a large size room, there was man wearing a leather coat with dark sunglasses with black pair of pants matching his shirt and coat. His name was Albert Wesker. It has been nearly nine years since the events of Raccoon City's end. Long after that many other events that shared the same event that doomed Raccoon City as such. Three months later Rockford Island outbreak shortly the Antarctic outbreak, the Sheena Island outbreak. In 2002 in South America a T-virus outbreak started, and in 2004 in Europe a new different kind of outbreak began from the parasite known as Las Plugas. And between the year of 2004 and 2005, a new virus known as the Abyss Rays, only to be fused with the T-virus becoming even stronger virus, thanks to a group known as Veltro, the event came to a close on a fallen ship known as the Queen Dido, thanks to BSSA members Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield. It has been four years Wesker and Chris last met. Thought he was believed to be dead along with Chris's partner Jill Valentine. Both survived the fall, when Jill sacrificed herself to save Chris by pushing Wesker out of the window in 2006. Much has happened after the fall of Raccoon City, and its legacy continued to exist throughout the years. Wesker heard someone entering the room Wesker looked over his right shoulder, and as the person spoke the BSAA killed Irving. Orders. And his death was no major lose. It will take some for them to reach us. For now let the others take keep them busy for a while. Send the bat again hopefully it will finish them off this time. Wesker smirked a bit. The unknown person nodded and left the room. Wesker smiled as his plans were nearly completed soon everything will be set and his goal shall become reality. Wesker couldn't have done it without his two favorite experiment test subject. I would have to thank you for your help in the end you too. Wesker chuckled. Wesker thought back four years ago in 2006. Four years ago. 2006, unknown location. It has been over a month since Wesker's and Chris's last encounter. Jill Valentine was within his grasp now. Jill Valentine woke up to the sound of a rock hitting against a wall. Jill opened her greenish-blue eyes finding herself inside a cell cage. Jill noticed she wasn't alone. Across from Jill's cell was another person locked inside a cell much like hers. The person was a young man of the age of 20 or late 20s. He had blonde spiky hair. His hair was blonde spiky that was long it stopped to his neck. He wore an orange jacket with orange black pants. His clothes were torn and rough up there was blood on his clothes. His eyes were crystal blue, but with a strong lack of sleep, he had heavy bags underneath his eyes. The young man stared at the wall while tossing a small rock against the wall, as the small rock bounced back to him. The young man didn't pay no mind to Jill, but once he stopped bouncing the rock, he spoke finally up huh? Where am I? Jill asked the young man. Where I do not know but who this belongs to that I know. He said with a bit of a Japanese accent when speaking English tongue. Last thing Jill remembers was saving Chris by pushing Wesker through a window. And the rest is blank. Jill jiggled the bars of her cell. The guard who has the key isn't here. The bars were once shock touch, but after you were put in here they shut them off. Whoever you are, you were handled with great care. What do you mean? She asked him. You were out cold. You had bandages around your head, arms. That was day ago. I've been in the cell for over three weeks. He said. Who are you? I'm Jill Valentine. Jill introduced herself to the young blonde man. I'm Naruto, Naruto Yuzumaki. He introduced himself. So Jill paused for a second judging from your name and accent you're from China, Japan or Asian. Jill was guessing her cellmate origin. Neither. He said. Come again. She said. I am born from neither. Japanese is the closest to my original nation tongue. But that doesn't matter right now. We are prisoners of your friend Naruto said. Wesker, Jill bit her bottom lip. So how do you two know each other? He asked Ms. Valentine. Yes, years ago he was the caption of STARS our former squad. Many of our friends died because of him and Umbrella. Jill looked saddened. She was captured by Wesker she didn't know why she was alive from such a great fall or why Wesker allow her to live. What's your story why did Wesker capture you? She asked. He didn't capture me. He saved me. Naruto's eyes had a look of pain and heartbreak within them. Something tells me he did more than just save you. Jill could see there more about this young man. Naruto remained silent as he went back to bouncing the rock back against the wall. So care to tell me your story? Jill asked kindly. I guess so, since you're the only one here. I guess I can tell you my story. Naruto said as he turned his attention to Jill. If we're stuck here might as well learn about each other. She said with a smile. Quick question Jill, do you believe in ninjas? Naruto said. 
Dil's eyes wide as she was left with a confused look you're a ninja. You don't believe me I take it. Naruto chuckled a little. Well I only see them in movies. But after dealing with what I've been through I can believe anything. Jill smiled at Naruto. Alright then well it all began two months ago. The fourth great ninja war was over. We were enjoying a time of peace. However that peace ended when an illness came to our lands. The illness made many our strong ninjas greatly ill. We weren't really sure how it started some believe it was something in the water or from an animal bite. No one was truly sure how it started it. My friends joined me during a mission to meet up with a doctor who supposedly rumors to have a cure that would help our village. But however while on the mission I was betrayed by my best friend. I thought he changed after the war was over. But I was wrong. My foolish nearly caused me my life, but however my friends, my lover were slaughtered before my eyes. I felt an uncontrollable rage overcame me, but I was struck down. I knew I was going to die I didn't have time to fully recover after the war. So I was defeated with ease. All of my friends are dead and only I remain. Wesker and his men found me. I should have died along with my friends. Naruto closed his eyes while sighing. Jill didn't want to ask but she did anyway who was your best friend. How close you two were. Naruto reopened his eyes as he continued since we were kids, his actually my god brother. Our mothers were best friends. But we didn't know when we were kids. I was always jealous of him, but as time changed he became jealous of me. How strong I became how much respect I gained on my own. We were best friends, brothers even. After the war was over I spared my friend's life, I believe he deserved it for the best. But I was wrong, because of it everyone I know Sakura-chan, Hinata, Niji, Lee and Kakashi. I don't know if my home is gone or did anyone survive the surprise attack. Naruto looked at his right hand and balled it into a fist. I'm sorry to hear that. I really am. Jill frowned as she didn't break eye contact with him. I believe you. My world we live in secret not found on your world map. He explained. I know what it's like losing your closest friends. You train together, laugh together and when you believe it's over after a nightmarish night it's begin a few days later. Jill remembered the fallen friends she lost within Raccoon City and during the event of the mansion. How did you lose your friends? He asked Jill. Have you ever helplessly watched your friend being ganged up and eaten by a pack of dogs or watched a friend sacrifice himself to be swallowed up by a snake? Or had their skulls ram in by an eight-foot monster or gunned down before your eyes? Jill asked Naruto. And I thought I had it bad. He frowned while saying. I had nightmares for years seeing their faces seeing the same events start over and over again and again. It wasn't easy to get rid of those nightmares. My friends died but they didn't die in vain. I kept on pushing myself. And as for my friends who survived Barry Rebecca Chris we've been through a lot. Jill could see Naruto had lost much hope even though he looked cool and collected. He was man that didn't have anything left to live for. What happened to your friend? She asked. He's dead too. When Wesker and his men found I was bathed in my friend's blood. I don't remember anything before they found me. I'm not sure what happened. I should have died that day, maybe then I would have some peace with my life. Being in this prison I don't know I guess I deserve to be in here. Naruto said coldly. Jill asked Naruto another question, so do you know what happened to the doctor you were supposed to meet, or do you know who it was? Or do you believe it was a trap? Naruto looked up at the ceiling of his cell I'm not sure anymore. I thought about for a long time. Wesker's doctors and nurses were surprised of my healing abilities. I was at death's door, but with their treatment I fully recover my fatal wounds, but I hadn't fully recovered my true strength. I'm not like everyone else I'm different from the rest. Right now I'm at their mercy until I'm 100%. As for my village I hope everyone's okay I hope everyone got better. Do you plan on staying here forever? Jill asked him. No I don't I'm just waiting. Waiting for what? She asked. For my strength to restore I could easily break this lock, but after the war it left me completely drained. My healing also took up my energy. Right now I'm normal as you are. Naruto said. Being normal isn't a bad thing. Jill said while glaring at him. Trust me I know what it's mean to be normal. Naruto laughed lightly. Is there anything else to your story? She asked him. Depends I could tell you my life story or we can escape. Jill was it. He asked as Jill nodded if we can help each other we can escape this place. That sounds a lot better than hearing my story. I suppose so, but I don't know. What if what you're saying is lies and you're working for Wesker? Jill glared at the young man. Naruto returned a glare back there's one thing I know is I'm no heir. Jill looked away turning her back to Naruto sorry it's just in the past Wesker used people to get what he wants. Sorry I misjudge you. It's okay. I know what it's like trusting people one thing and getting betrayed seconds later. Until we figure out how to escape this place. It's best that we get to know another one. I guess we can tell our life stories after all. Naruto showed his friendly smile though his smile was a sad one it was a smile nonetheless. 
Little did the two know about there was a camera ride on the ceiling listening to every single word. Albert Wesker watched the two from the security room. And a flashback. Elsewhere within the underground facility. It was a few hours since Chris Redfield and his new partner Shiva Alomar entered the underground facility after defeating a B.O.W. within the temple ruins and running into familiar B.O.W. that Chris's sister Claire Redfield ran into her time in Raccoon City. In search of Jill Valentine and also discover the secret that is Euroboros. Chris and Shiva were stocking up ammo after surviving a near ambush of liquors B. It has been a tough ride with the two being challenged by chaotic events and battles. However the two kept moving on through. After taking an elevator to the lower levels of the facility while Chris and Shiva discover a giant size room with an odd circle elevator. What the hell? What is this place? Chris asked. Shiva looked around the place as she too was curious. This was in the pictures too. Shiva said while, Chris eyed everything within the giant room. Then Jill might be here. Chris said as Shiva nodded. Suddenly a loud alarm sound went off as from the walls of the room was a large size pod that opened up. Upon opening a drained gray body of a person fell out falling into the abyss down below. What have they done? Shiva said pitying the person who just fell. Chris looked away focusing on the control pad he saw in the center of the room. Shiva soon followed after her partner. Chris tried to see if this elevator would know where Jill was. But lucky on his side he saw an image of Jill on screen. Jill. He said happily. The locks on the giant elevator unlock as it went down. Chris and Shiva ready for anything that would come their way. While the elevator went fairer and fairer down level after level, Chris and Shiva could thousands of thousands of pods on the walls. There's so many Chris paused while Shiva frowned upon agreeing with him, they must be kidnapping people from all over the world to experiment on. Suddenly the elevator suddenly stopped. It stopped. Chris said. Why? Shiva asked. Suddenly a large shadow cast over the two as looked over his left shoulder to see what it was. Drawing his handgun and soon did Shiva. Oh, that's why. Chris groaned. It was giant size crossbreed of a spider and crab. Its front two legs were large size claws, as it had eight eyes with a giant mouth with large size fangs, along with tiny small size fangs behind its large fangs. This crossbreed monster was known as U8 for Ultimate 8. U8 roared at the two as it laid down its right claw at Shiva, Chris think fast, and pushed Shiva out of its reach, saving his partner from being grabbed. U8 had thick armor shell, bullets didn't phase through a tough shell. Shiva however saw its other large long size legs and saw a red area showing an exposed area of flesh. Chris its legs I think that's its weak spot. Shiva told her partner. Okay, focus on the exposed areas. Shiva nodded to Chris. The U8 didn't make its battle easy as pie. It smashed its claws down on the floor shaking the elevator, nearly causing Chris and Shiva to fall down to their knees on their butts. After firing enough rounds to its exposed areas, U8 submit to its wounds and crash down on the elevator, with its mouth open wide for an attack. He's down now ours chance. Shiva yelled. Shiva tossed Chris a grenade to Chris. Chris pulled the trigger eat this. He tossed it within the mouth of U8, just as U8 shuts its mouth. The grenade went off without U8's mouth as a piece of its shell cracked on top of its exposing small part of its brain. It's working his weak points are showing. Shiva said. The weight again smashed its claws on the floor, causing the elevator to shake again. Let's finish this I don't think the elevator can hold his weight. Chris warned Shiva. Chris and Shiva switched to powerful firearms from their handguns to a shotgun for Chris and submachine for Shiva. With their weapons switched the two were able to make U8 once again submit to its wounds. Here have another. Chris tossed a second grenade into its mouth and like before it went off only showing even more heavily damage to its skull of its shell. Suffering from too much damage the U8 opens its mouth again, but this it shot out what appears to be eggs. The eggs cracked open as a pair of flying bugs came from the eggs. Shiva focus on the offsprings, while Chris focus on U8. But their teamwork giving them the upper hand U8 again was brought down. Dust die already. Chris tossed his third and final grenade into U8's mouth. With the last grenade went to finishing it off once and for all. U8 roared its death cry as it turned its attention on Chris and Shiva. Shiva saw what U8 was about to do. It slashed its claw at Chris this time being the one who caused its pain. Shiva pushed Chris out of the reach of its attack as Shiva was sliced from behind. U8 fell down into the abyss of the lower hundred floors. Shiva. Chris ran over to his partner. Shiva are you alright? He asked her, U8's claw sliced through Shiva's armor protection against melee damage. I'm fine good thing I was wearing that armor. Shiva chuckled lightly. Chris looked at her back as he removed the melee armor piece. U8 cut through the armor, Shiva had a nasty scar on her back. The cut wasn't deep, but she was bleeding. While the elevator's lock was unlocked it went back to lowers its level to where Jill was kept in her pod. 
Knowing a few things about Medic and such, Chris used a first aid spray he had on him. Chris wrapped bandages around Shiva's lower back and stomach. Thanks Chris. Shiva smiled. No thank you, you saved my life. Chris said, while smiling. Well lately we've both been saving each other's butts I lost count. Shiva chuckled but stopped because of her wound. The elevator stop again as this time the floor they reached the same one Jill was being kept. The pod reached out to them only to open showing an empty pod. To Chris's disappointment he cursed. Amna just where the hell is she? He wondered. Suddenly on the control of the elevator the screen opened as a voice spoke getting their attention. Mr. Redfield, how nice to finally make your acquaintance. Shiva and Chris saw a young beautiful woman on screen. Who the hell are you? Chris asked. Excella Joan. She works for Tricell. Shiva spoke. Nice, you've done your homework. Excella chuckled with a sexy smirk. An officer in the Global Pharmaceutical Consortium. Why? Shiva asked Excella. Excella frowned while placing her hands on her hips, as if I need to explain myself to you. Although weren't you two given orders to retreat. So it was you. Shiva bare her teeth in anger, while Excella grinned. Where is Jill? Chris demanded. Jill? Even if I did know, you think I would tell you? Excella frowned. Cut the crap. Tell us where she is. Chris yelled. As soon as you two are done with your little vigilant mission, you should leave. There's nothing here worth throwing your lives away for. Excella frowned at the last second as the screen cut off. She's lying. She knows something. She knows where Jill I know it. Shiva told Chris, giving him hope to find his old friend. It's time we get some answers on what's going on here. Chris sighed. The elevator reached a floor called Haven. So this was the facility Excella was talking about. Shiva said to Chris. She's got us under surveillance. I can almost guarantee she sent that BOW to eliminate us. Chris said, as he sweat drop while reloading his shotgun. You can ask her about that and about Jill, once we find her. Shiva said. Alright then let's find her then. Shiva are you can you move? He asked worrying about his partner's well-being. I'm fine Chris I can move. I won't let it get in our way. I won't let you do this on your own. We're both here to find Jill and stop this. Shiva told Chris, Chris nod his head believing Shiva. Chris and Shiva thought for a moment on moving to another floor. But Shiva noticed there was something down from the catwalk from the elevator. Chris followed his partner although she was wounded Shiva kept moving on. There was another battle armor set in Shiva's size on a nearby wooden table. Chris and Shiva weren't sure who left it here. This version was much thicker than her last model. On the floor near the table was another armor set, but this one was in Chris's size. On Chris's new armor set there was a note on it, saying a new form of melee armor, specially made against shaper blades, and now padded with bulletproof leather features now members must wear new prototype, especially upon entering the waste disposal facility. It's not as heavy as the last one and easy to move in. Shiva said while feeling how different this new armor set was. More protection is what we need against the BOWS we were letting the enemy left their prototype around. Chris put on his new armor set. While Chris was putting on his armor, Shiva overheard the sound of a giggle. The giggle echoed through the hallway they were now in. Shiva? Chris spoke, seeing a worry look on Shiva's face. I heard something. She said. The sound of giggle was heard again. Chris heard it. Let's go. Shiva nodded. Chris stayed in front of Shiva being her front guard against someone or anything that posed a threat. Chris and Shiva heard voices nearby. Chris's footsteps were heard down the hallway as it echoes through the quiet hallway. This hallway was quite unlike the others there was something different about this one. There no sight of any of the enemies they have ever faced there was loads of boxes that had ammo within them. Come on, come on. Chris and Shiva heard a voice. The voice sound young like a child. Shiva and Chris follow the voices down the hallway. The sound of footsteps was heard as if they were running. Chris told Shiva he'll be back as Chris ran down the hallway passing through other hallways. But stop when he heard the sound of footsteps running downstairs. When Chris reached a corner he saw a long line of stairs going down to an unknown lower level. On the floor Chris found a keycard he wasn't sure what this keycard belonged to. On the keycard there was an animal on it. The name of the card was called N card. Shiva met up with Chris and asked what he found, showing her the keycard and told her he heard someone downstairs. Shiva told Chris it could be that they're escaped prisoners or possible escape scientist escaping from Chris, thinking he might have been one of the Magini. Shiva and Chris journeyed down the stairs wondering where the person was. Reaching the bottom of the stairs Shiva and Chris reached a large door that was sealed tightly. This door needs a keycard. I've never seen tight like this before. Chris said. Chris tried to use that keycard you found. Shiva said. Chris slid the keycard through the door as a voice spoke which came from the door. Vocal password, the voice said. Amnit we need a password. Chris whispered to Shiva. Tell me about it. Shiva said let guess. 
Umbrella, Chris guessed what the password. Password decline, the boy said. Tricell, Shiva also guessed. Password decline. Euroboros. Chris tried again. Password decline. Jill. Chris tried one last time. Password approve. Okay now we really need to find out what's going on here. Chris well both he and Shiva sweat dropped together, they were guessing they didn't think would have been the password to this door. They drew their weapons as they entered, but it certainly wasn't a sight they were expecting. What is this? He asked noticing the room was not what one would expect of a research facility. It was brightly colored and had pictures of animals on the walls and a large group of pillows in an Arabic bed pattern with pillows around. The room was carpeted as well and had a bookshelf with what seemed to be children's books. There wasn't anything in the room itself apparently. Chris, this looks like a room for children, but why would Excella have this kind of room? Shiva asked as giggling was heard. Unless they're using children in their experiment. Chris frowned. We have to stop this now. Shiva said as Chris nodded. Chris turned walked forward only to step on a toy bear that made a noise hug me. The bear said. Hey get off Mr. Bear. A young voice was heard. That often bully. Suddenly a pillow was thrown at Chris's back of his head. Chris turned around and sliced the pillow with his large knife as he looked at where it was thrown. No one was there. Who's there? Show yourselves. Chris said as he aimed the handgun around. No, we won't. A young boy's voice said. Movement was heard once more and it was accompanied by some barks and growls. You think these are new B.O.W.? Shiva asked. We not bow, that what mommy tells us. A girl's voice was heard. Come on out we won't hurt you, Chris said. The room full silence until they heard a nearby noise that caught their attention. Shiva. Chris whispered to Shiva. Right. Shiva nodded. Shiva walked back up against a pillar of pillows and grabbed a pillow and saw two girls as their eyes widened with fear. The two girls were an odd pair as one girl had a cat like as she even had cat ears and a tail. Her hair was blue colored as her eyes were blue but were cat like. The second girl had green hair with what appears to be small wings on top of her head. The two girls held each other and scream in terror. What the? Shiva asked as the two girls huddled each other. Well Chris and Shiva had their guards down upon discovering the two young girls. Man's eye. A voice yelled as a boy with platinum silver hair caught Chris's off guard. Chris dropped his handgun while struggling as the young boy had his hands covering Chris's eyes. Get away from my sisters. A girl's voice caught Shiva's attention as Shiva quickly grabbed a pillow and threw it at a dark red hair girl. When the girl removed the pillow she saw Shiva aiming her handgun at her face. Chris finally grabbed a grip of the young boy and smashed him to the ground. Stop please don't hurt them. They were just protecting us. Another child's voice was heard. Shiva and Chris turned their attention to see a young boy with short blonde hair holding what seems to be stuffed toy dog. Chris and Shiva let the two children go as the six children gathered together. There were six of them the one who tried to fight Chris and Shiva seemed to be the oldest of the six. While the rest seemed to be the middle and youngest. Who are you? Said the blue haired cat girl. Are you friends or foe? The silver-haired boy asked. Friend, I'm Shiva Alomar. BSAA Shiva introduced herself to the children. Chris Redfield also BSAA Chris also introduced himself. You look somewhat familiar. Chris said while Shiva stared at the blonde-haired boy. There was something about his face and his blue eyes. BSAA? The green-haired girl said as she and the blue-haired girl titled her head wondering who these people were. Wait did you say you're Chris? The silver-haired boy said. Yeah I am, Chris Redfield. Who are you kids what are you doing here? Chris asked. Group up. The green-haired girl yelled as the six of them gathered together as they whispered to one another. The silver-haired boy looked back at Shiva and Chris, the group disbands as the blue-haired girl walked up to Chris while looking shy. Um Mr. Redfield are you the Chris Redfield? The one who was a part of STARS? The little girl asked. Chris's eyes widen how did you know that? STARS was disbanded years ago. Well mommy told us about her old friends. The blue-haired girl said. Would you mind telling us who is your mommy? And what your name? Shiva kneed down to the little girl's level while smiling. Felicia Felicia Valentine. Felicia introduces herself. Valentine Chris spoke with a calm tone as Chris also kneed down to the children level. Is your mother Jill, Jill Valentine? Chris asked. Yes, are you Chris the friend mommy told us about? Felicia asked. Yes, I knew Jill she was my friend. Do you know where Jill is? He asked Felicia. Felicia looked at her brothers and sisters as they nodded mommy is away, she's working right now. Daddy's is also working, but he'll be back soon. He always does. Well Felicia, Jill is your mommy not mine's. Spoke the dark red haired girl. At the crap Jill may be Felicia's mother, but all six of us have the same father. The silver haired boy spoke. Chris looks at this. Shiva found what appears to be a journal. What's this? He asked Shiva. 
That's mommy's book she wrote a lot of stuff in it. She said only she and daddy can see it. Felicia told Shiva and Chris. We're here to find Jill. Maybe this will help us find her. Mind if we look? Chris asked the six children as each of them didn't mind at all. Though he didn't find Jill but oddly strange children who may or may be not Jill's kid, Chris hoped whatever within this journal may help him and Shiva find Jill before it's too late. Chris look at this. Shiva found what appears to be a journal. What's this? He asked Shiva. That's mommy's book she wrote a lot of stuff in it. She said only she and daddy can see it. Felicia told Shiva and Chris. We're here to find Jill. Maybe this will help us find her. Mind if we look? Chris asked the six children as each of them didn't mind at all. Though he didn't find Jill but oddly strange children who may or may be not Jill's kid, Chris hoped whatever within this journal may help him and Shiva find Jill before it's too late. But before Chris had a chance to open the journal he noticed how the children were looking at him. Each of the children had their own innocent look within their eyes. They weren't human he knew that for sure. So Felicia is the only one of Jill's children. Father has six children three from Jill and three from mommy. The red hair girl said. Jill has three kids I would like to see them. Shiva said Felicia is cute I wish to see the rest. Beside Felicia stood the silver hair young boy and right behind him while hiding behind her big brother was a green eye light red color mix with a bit of white. She had what appeared to be a short dog tail. I'm John Virgil Valentine. The young man introduced himself. John stood aside as his second little sister who was shy much like Felicia. I'm Kashina Sakura Yuzumaki. Bow her head showing respect for Shiva and Chris. Chris looked at the other three as he asked and who is your mother? Read and you will know. The red hair girl said. Chris opens the journal and began to read it staring after the third week of Jill's capture. 2006, May 1. It has been about three weeks since I've met Naruto. The both of us have planned an escape, but however our little escape will be more difficult than we thought. It seems the location we were at was on an island off the coast of South America. Naruto and I have become good friends. We share each other our past on how each of us has lost a close friend and loved ones. Returning to my cell after having a mass amount of blood work done. I could barely keep my eyes open. Naruto's voice I could hear upon being drained. Jill, Jill, hey Jill you okay? Naruto asked. Jill opened her eyes to see Naruto in his cell with a worry look on his face. Jill could barely keep her eyes open, she was weakly drained from her blood and needed rest. I'm fine just need some rest. Jill said before blacking out. Six hours later Jill woke to find food in front of her on a plate. However Naruto wasn't in his cell he was gone. Jill believed Wesker and his men took him while Jill was resting. Jill lay quietly in her cell waiting for her friend to return. A day has passed and Naruto didn't return to his cell. Jill grew worried of him, what if Wesker put him into an experiment or killed him? After hours of waiting, Jill took a nap while doing so. She heard the doors open as footsteps were heard. Jill fake sleeping as the cell door opened, Jill heard the sound of Naruto's moaning. The cell door closed as the unknown guards left closing the door locking from behind. Jill stood up looking over at Naruto's cell. Naruto was on the floor moaning as he tossed around. Jill could see there was mark of beating on his forearms. Naruto must have tried to fight back whatever they did to him. Suddenly Naruto rose up only to fall to his knees as he started to cough, Naruto's cough sound nasty and very ill. Naruto threw up as he soon coughed again afterwards. You okay? Jill asked. Naruto threw up again, Jill sweat drop, while she didn't enjoy seeing the sight of a friend throwing up, especially if it smelled very foul. Suddenly Naruto's body twitched hard, his hands jerked. Naruto grabbed as if he was having a heart attack. Jill's fear double she feared he was mutating before her very eyes. Naruto again threw up, but this time he puked out something that nearly made him choke. It was round and gray as on the gray bowl was living worm's parasite. Naruto backed away from it while recovering. Naruto smashed down his right foot upon it. Naruto looked around to see if there was a camera. He didn't see anything, but he felt he was being watched. Naruto shouted you can't kill me like that. Do you hear me? What happened? Jill asked her cellmate. Wesker, he planted something inside of me. I thought I was going to die but Naruto paused as he let out a relaxing sigh, my body was able to get rid of it. My body doesn't like it. Did Wesker say what it was? Jill asked. He said something called Los Plugas or something, do you know what it is? It felt like my body was dying for a moment. Los Plugas that's not good. Jill frowned. You know what is it? He asked her. It's nothing like any of the virus I've dealt with. A USA agent by the name of Leon S. Kennedy encounters Los Plugas before. It's a parasite that usually kills the host replacing everything within its being by being controlled by alpha parasite. How did Wesker get it? Jill puzzled. Naruto rest against the wall of his cell, even though I threw it up out of my body. It hurt like hell, my body rejected it completely. I don't know anyone else can do that. 
Leon's report said it is possible the selected that immune to Las Plagas can reject the parasite before a complete bonding. The parasite mainly hooks itself between your spinal cord and right above the heart and ribsage. But other than that you need a machine to remove them. Jill explained to her Yuzumaki friend. Naruto wipe his mouth I guess my body was the selected one. He chuckled. Either that or your DNA there are those immune even to the T-virus's mutant, but only to a limit before complete mutations. Jill said while staring at Naruto. Don't worry Jill I'm fine. I'm not turning into any monster. I'm strong, stronger than I look. Naruto chuckled while grinning. 2006, May 26. Nearly half of a month has gone by. Wesker began other experiment there were rare moment that Wesker would do blood work on us. Wesker did had Las Plagas, during the blood work, Naruto killed a guard when trying to escape. The guard's head explosive only to show another head reform from the neck. I didn't truly know why Wesker kept Naruto around. I didn't care he was the only person I could trust. Naruto began to recover some of his energy he calls chakra today would be the day we escape. You should you recover enough? Jill asked. It's enough. Cage bunch and no jutsu. In a proof of smoke another Naruto appeared outside of the cell. The clone Naruto looked just like Naruto only his clothes were clean and he didn't like hell. The clone Naruto reached in his ninja bag and used his kunai to unlock the cell of both Naruto's and Jill's cells. Once the clone's job was done he disappeared in smoke. Jill was amazed by Naruto's ability to clone himself just by sacrifice a bit of his energy in order to make it happen. I think that's awesome wait until you see my original move. Naruto smiled. But suddenly a loud alarm went off. Shit come on let's go before that caught us. Jill nodded and followed Naruto. Upon exiting their prison cells the two found themselves within the unknown facility of Wesker. To their surprise the facility was on full alert. Naruto wasn't sure if it was because the two escaped or something else. While running down the hallway. The two found a corpse of one of the guards. Jill searched the guard for anything useful or important as such a key card. Jill took the guard's handgun and little handgun ammo he had on him. Even though they weren't throwing knives, Naruto took the guard's combat knife. It was better than nothing as the two traveled together through the full alert. Suddenly while searching the hallway for any enemies that might stop them. Jill noticed there was black colored slime on the floor of the slime. The slime trail came out from a large size destroyed research room and down the hallway. Jill didn't like the look of it at all. If there was an escape BOW this would make their escape plan very difficult. After finding a stairway that leads to the upper floor as the two made it to the second floor that was listed as the firearm floor. Naruto and Jill had to be careful not knowing if the enemies were armed to the teeth or they were waiting for them to show up. Making their way right up to another corner that leads to another level of stairs. The two were caught by a large group of soldiers, all armed with submachine guns and body armor. Am so close. Jill said. Very close indeed love. A voice spoke as two soldiers stood aside as the unknown person walked forward. The man was tall about 6'1 of height. He wore a coat covering his body. Wearing a red bandana around his forehead. The man's face had an appearance that of a skull, but with fleshes still on barely. He had a black colored guitar strapped to his back. I got it boys. The skull face man said. As the guards backed off. And who the hell are you? Naruto asked. The skull face man chuckled I am glad you asked that mate. But first I have to thank you on giving me real life. It wasn't for you I would have been dead with no chance of full recovery. Explain, Naruto said with a stare. That's an easy one mate. Your blood is magic. It got wonderful healing gift so gifted it can revive the dead with a special mix in the branch. The skull man laughed. That why Wesker wanted my blood. Some of that reason being is that. And a little project he's been working on lately. Your blood seems on being a real joy for it. But dear love there has special juice in her blood just want the boss needs. The skull man again laughed. Who are you? Jill asked. I'm glad you ask love. I'm Lord Zabel Raptor and you gave me this great power. The boss wants you two back in your cells. And that's my new job, no hard feelings I'm just doing business and beside I own the boss a huge debt on my life. Raptor said as he drew the guitar while staring at the two. I shall rock you so hard your souls will fall from the heaven so deep hell will spit you back out. Time for me to show the original B.O.W. how his blood is filled with such gifted gifts. The rock's call man body grows with a light purple aura. But however before Raptor was about to show Jill and Naruto what he got. Black slime dripped down from the ceiling as spilled downward between the two and Raptor and his group. The black slime took on the form of a tall giant size human being. The black slime didn't have anything eyes until it turned its attention on Naruto and Jill. Its eyes were dead white as a pair of large sharp fangs was shown behind the covered black slime. The black creature was about 12 feet tall, although pieces of follow from the ceiling. The monster was growing with more of its dripping from the ceiling. Jill fired two rounds of bullets at the black creature. Bullet seemed to show little effect at all. 
Naruto grabbed Jill's right hand and ran off down the stairs, hoping to find another stairs way on block. Naruto what should we do? That thing is mostly coming after us. Jill told Naruto, the Uzumaki looked around the third floor seeing there was another exit. The third floor was the second research floor it wasn't damaged as much as the second floor was. That thing it was looking at us. Naruto said while looking around. Jill heard the sound of gunfire above them followed by the loud crash noise. Sound like they having a party. Jill joked. Yeah well that party I will gladly missed. Naruto said while searching down a nearby hallway and found another stairway. Rushing back to the second floor only to see skipped it. Naruto and Jill could hear the black creature closing in on them. Lucky for them they reached the first floor. Naruto quickly saw there was a map on the wall and took it quickly there's a dock, but we need to get out of here first. It's to the south. Naruto saw a key hanging on a key holder. Naruto took the key, but as he did he saw an open journal that caught his attention as he picked it up. Report on U9. U9 is the name of our new experiments. Experiments of U4 through U7 are failures. Crossbreeding is much harder than we thought. Cloning only make it difficult we must need the DNA to be stand able enough to survive the fusion stage. However with Albert Wesker's help we have a sample of Las Plagas. Although the early sample we were given was a fake sample though it was so similar to the original parasite. But however we gain our true sample from the remains of Wesker's agent from the corpse of Jack Krauser. Ms. Ada Wong has betrays Mr. Wesker, though traitor don't survive for long, especially from Mr. Wesker. The other day Alex gave us an improved version of Las Plagas he calls Minus 2 Lira. Minus 2 Lira seems to be a stronger of the original parasite how Alex gains is unknown to Mr. Wesker. It is possible Hunk was there as well unknowing to Ms. Wong, Mr. Death got the job done like he always does. We look forward to see what else Mr. Death shall bring us under Alex's orders. U9 is in its early stage. We needed to test the new virus Euroboros on a human being, who was daily feed the remains of a tyrant and the remains of an old type liquors. The human seemed to have taken a well enjoyable taste to the special meatloaf. Two days and he shows signs of no illness however there are grey spots shown on his body. Four days later the man was found in his cell dead. We aren't sure the cause of death. However Mr. Wesker told us not to dispose of the body yet and told us to send more of the special meatloaf in the cage. The very next day the special meatloaf was gone and the man was alive or not quite the best use for the word alive, he was a zombie however. He's different from any T-type zombie. He looks alive he looks smart enough to talk to. It's been about three weeks since we had our experiment in work. It seems within the special meatloaf wasn't just old tea remains but samples of minus two lira. We decided to call the experiment U9. U9 seems to follow orders well. The parasite like the original seems to be affected by sonic sound and fire and bright light. The day we decide to move U9 to the lower level and see his combat skills against a nemesis T-type. I have no idea there was still a nemesis T-type remained after the fall of Umbrella. Half of a page is covered in blood as Naruto read the final words of the owner of the report. It evolves upon death. Oh, just great. Jill sigh while face palming. A nemesis huh? That thing we saw could have have been U9 maybe killed the nemesis and ate it. Naruto guessed. I really don't want to stay and find out. Fighting the nemesis nearly ended my life. Jill remembered her last days in Raccoon City. Don't worry we'll escape before that thing find us. Naruto patted on Jill's right shoulder. Jill smiled at her cellmate as the two left the facility heading off to the dock in the south. The docks. Naruto and Jill would see from afar there was a boat still in the water. But however Jill and Naruto needed to reach docking area. Their large cargo boxes that blocked there. Naruto knew Jill couldn't reach it without extra help. Naruto faced Jill and grabbed her by her hips. Jill blushed suddenly as Naruto grabbed her hips. Lifting her upward grab it. He told Jill, Jill grab on pulling herself up on the large cargo. Just as Jill was about to reach out to grab Naruto, both him and Jill seen the large black creature coming towards them. The black creature was large and long. Off its body came off worms as each crawl it took covering the ground in its liming trail. Jill go on. Go. He yelled. No, I'm not leaving you. Jill said. I said go. You're in no shape fighting that monster. I might be able to slow it down long enough for you to escape. He told his cellmate. But Jill frowned. She didn't want to leave her friend behind, especially since he helped her escape. No buts go. Get out of here. Go Jill go. I can handle this. You got to get back to your friends. Jill curse as she ran off leaving Naruto being the one to take care of the black creature known as U9. Come on big guy. You want me here I am. Naruto high jump on the large cargo boxes as U9 reached the docks. The creature grew since it last encountered them. The creature was about 20 feet as it was on its belly from the looks of it. Naruto closed his eyes and focus come on give me enough juice to keep this freak busy. Naruto opened his eyes as his blue eyes were filled with strong aura of chakra. 
It may not be sage mode, but this will have to do for now. You're not so big. I fought a beast bigger than you. You're nothing. Naruto's comment anger U9 as it's raise its right hand in the air as the worm-covered hand suddenly turn into a dark claw. U9's claw torn through the cargo boxes like paper as U9 glared at Naruto, as the young Uzumaki could see it staring down at him with its dead eyes. U9 roared as black liquid spray from its mouth. The black spray from its mouth melted the other cargo boxes with ease. Naruto stood his ground though he was scared as shit he needed to give Jill enough time to escape that's all he cared about. He failed third time saving a friend he won't fail a fourth time. Suddenly U9 grabbed two cargo's boxes as if for suppose. U9 stood up on its feet as Naruto looked up at the U9. U9 was about 80 feet tall. One of the tallest of any beast Naruto has ever faced in his life. Much like Naruto was shock upon the monster's true size. Jill's mouth hung open up seeing the height size of U9. Naruto couldn't take down something on that level alone. Jill knew that for a fact. Jill looked around for any weapon to help him a rocket launcher, a giant machine gun anything. Suddenly Jill saw from her right a giant crane machine that holds a large size glass. Jill wasn't sure if that giant piece of glass would be enough to kill it for enough for Naruto to escape. Much like Naruto, Jill wouldn't abandon a friend especially who helped her. Even though Naruto was sacrificing himself so Jill can escape it wasn't right. Jill ran off hoping that someone left the key inside the giant crane. While Naruto was dodging for dear life against U9's attacks, U9 punched the cargo boxes he was standing on. Lucky for Naruto there was over hundred of them for him to use as cargo and support. If only I had my ninja gear on me. I would use a bomb tag on him already. Naruto said to himself. U9 started to drool from its mouth as his acid drool melt the other cargo boxes, as the giant B.O.W. actually spit at Naruto. Ah the just nasty. Naruto dodged the spit attack. Naruto get out of the way. A familiar voice yelled. Naruto looked up to see Jill was controlling the giant crane, as she let go of the giant piece of glass. The glass fell upon U9's head slicing it off in one go. U9 let out an inhuman death cry as blood sprayed from its leaking neck. Its head crashed down nearly crashing Naruto. U9 now headless wing its arms wildly as it hit the giant crane Jill was piloting. H-H-H-H-H. Jill screamed. U9 smashes its arms against the crane breaking it apart bit by bit. Suddenly Naruto had flash images of his friends. Seeing the look on their faces upon their deaths Naruto's heart started to beat fast. Naruto's eyes flash red and back to blue again and again. Not again I won't lose another friend. Naruto's body was flowing with energy as Naruto roared as his body bust with gold energy. Naruto held his right hand in the air as he focused his mighty and the rest of his remaining strength in this one Rasengan. Naruto ran toward the headless B.O.W. and just as U9 smash against it one last time the crane crashed down hard. Naruto roared out in anger as he drives into U9's neck as the B.O.W. consumes the Konoha Ninja. Haboom. Naruto lay there on the ground covered in the blood of U9. Naruto spit up the blood that fell into his mouth. Naruto once again like before he felt completely drained. Using up his saved up chakra to save the life of Jill Valentine. Jill. 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 Naruto called out her name. But no answer. Naruto hoped he wasn't too late. Naruto went to where the crane fell and found the pilot sit was empty, but there was blood along with some broken glass. Jill. Naruto found Jill was about three feet away from the crane. She wasn't in any shape to be moved at all. Jill was bleeding from the head, there was glass jam right in her left thigh. If she wasn't given any medic she could die. Whoa ho. Did I mess a party or what? What a rock battle that was mate. What a blast that was ha 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 ho. Naruto looked over his right shoulder to see him Lord Raptor, but however he wasn't alone at his side was soldiers and Wesker himself. Mate, the game is over. It was a nice try I have to admit, but if it wasn't for you nine, then you both would have been free jailbirds. Now come along now the two of you are in no shape of fighting. Raptor said ready to use his power given to him thanks to Naruto's DNA. You sure you want to test that? I may be tired now but don't think your guns will touch me. Naruto smirked. Wesker smirk may be that true or not, but Jill can't. You have lose. Promise me no harm will come to Jill. Naruto glared at Wesker and Raptor. No harm shall come to her. The both of you are very important to me and Naruto today you have proven yourself even more worthy. I'll keep you around not just for your DNA now. I must thank you for showing me your power. Wesker laughed. Naruto glared at the two before he closed his eyes submitting defeat for now. Three days later. Wesker watched the video was Naruto in his cell watching Jill who was in her cell, but hospitalizes in a bed. Mate has a soft spot for love there. Raptor sat on a couch while tuning his black guitar. Wesker watched how caring Naruto was for Jill. Seeing her in a wound state deeply wounded his heart. It would seems I have the key to Mr. Naruto's trust and loyalty. I just need to play my cards right. 
But right now we need to move. Did the team gather the remains of U9? Wesker asked Raptor. Of what remains that could find? Made almost destroyed the little bugger completely. The remains are kept in the cold. Raptor reported. But now then I have found a very useful DNA within Jill Valentine. If Naruto's DNA combined with the original virus was able to revive a man and grant him power. I wonder what Jill DNA shall give us. U9 was a prototype to my Euroboros project it wasn't complete. For an incomplete experiment it sure caused major damage. Raptor chuckled. Yes, even I was surprised by this. I would need to keep not only the rest of the U series under control, but Naruto as well. He has proven to me he can cause more damage than any BOW, and he's only human. But his DNA shows me great promises. I will need to keep him under my control. Wesker said while thinking of how to keep Naruto in under his control. Long as you have Ms. Valentine, he can't do a thing. Yes but it won't last for long. Well why not try that lost parasite whatever you call it? Raptor asked. I did in the beginning. But his DNA rejected it. He is one of the few whose immunity is great. For now keeping him and Jill in their cells is important. If there was only more like him and me. Your work would have gone much quicker. Raptor's words gave Wesker a wonderful but evil idea. Yes more like him. Wesker smiled. The whole month has passed since we defeated the BOW that was known as U9. I was in a coma for that time. Wesker treated my wounds like he did before. I was unaware what happened within a month. However I later woke up, the doctors say I made a full recovery. I noticed my hair was different now my brown hair was now light blonde and my skin tone became pale I was very pale. Naruto was gone for about two weeks I was alone in my cell. I wake the next day in new clothes it wasn't just clothes but a battlesuit, I wondering if he died or did he escape. I only hoped he was safe. It was about half a week later. I saw him again Wesker. It has been quite some time since we last chat Jill. Wesker said with a cocky smirk on his face. What do you want Wesker? She asked while glaring at her former STARS captain. Nothing yet, just came here to tell you the news of what I found within your DNA. I am sure you are very familiar with it. He let out an evil chuckled. What did you find? Jill asked with a worry look. An old friend the T-virus. He said as Jill's eyes widened with shock. No that can't be I thought Jill paused. You were cured. It would seem the cure you was given during your battle with the nemesis only kept the virus in a dormant state. Don't worry it won't kill or mutant you. Upon discovering this your body has bonded with the virus. You have new anti-blood cells thanks to the virus. Jill you hold the cure to the T-virus or something close enough of controlling it or destroying it. For now Jill, I shall leave you be. I know you long to see a friend. Wesker turned away as Jill saw Naruto standing by Wesker's side as Naruto had his hands held back behind his back. Naruto wore handcuffs as Wesker opened Jill's cell pushing him inside and locking the cell. Take care until we meet again. Jill was happy to see Naruto again, but however he looked different than he was before. He had a tired look in his eyes as if he hasn't slept in weeks. Naruto wore new clothes, wearing black pants along with a black shirt. Naruto looked clean as if he was given a bath. Naruto what did they do to you? She asked her friend. Naruto didn't say anything, Naruto sighed as he bare his teeth as he tried to break the handcuffs. It didn't take long, but Naruto broke the handcuff as he rubbed his right wrist. Naruto looked at Jill from head to toe. Jill wasn't sure what was going on. She wanted to know what happened while she was in a coma. Naruto suddenly just removed his shirt showing Jill's chest. Jill gasped as she saw a large scar line where his heart was and another scar, but this looked new. It was a deep stab mark. Naruto. She said. I'm sorry Jill. Forgive me. Naruto took one step forward to Jill as Valentine smiled at her friend. Naruto continued walking towards Jill unaware on Naruto's neck there was a red device strapped on the back of his neck. End of Jill's journal. So Wesker is alive. Damn it. The rest of the notes are torn out. Chris said with a frown he wanted to know what else happened. So this is Naruto fellow is a friend of Jill. They almost escaped. Shiva said. At least we know Jill's alive, but she's not alone. Chris said, as Shiva nodded. With information that Jill Valentine is alive and well, Chris and Shiva are more focused now on stopping this outbreak upon the world. End of chapter 2. Next chapter no death for the strong part 3. Well now everyone I hope you all enjoy the second chapter. Now for the children shall be now known. Everyone was right and wrong on the rest of the children. Naruto's six children some of them had their DNA reform and have been experiment on. Felicia Valentine, Morgan Jion, Ken Yuzumaki, Kashina Yuzumaki, Virgil Valentine, Viper Jion. Their full names. Don Virgil Valentine I fuse John Talbane Gallon from Darkstalker and Virgil Sparta from Devil May Cry as one Naruto and Jill kind of had a fight over naming the children and decide to fuse the name that they love. 
Felicia calls him John some time while Kashina calls him Virgil some time. Minato Ken Yuzumaki Minato Namak is Naruto's father and Ken Masters, form Street Fighter wanting to name him after his father, Excella, decide to keep his first name Minato, but also keep his middle name be Ken. Viper Demitri Jion in the start I was gonna make her a female Demitri, but decide make her see Viper, but fuse of both. Demitri Maximoff from Darkstalker and Sea Viper from Street Fighter Wesker was the one who named her. Morrigan Joan Morrigan from Darkstalker Excella named her, and Naruto liked it. Ashina Sakura Yuzumaki reason Naruto after her after the two women who changed his life and who were his loved ones, his mother Kashina and his best friend and late lover Sakura. Also a bit of adding of Sakura from Street Fighter. Felicia Valentine Felicia from Darkstalker both Naruto and Jill love the name and decide together the name. Jill's children are Joe Virgil, Felicia and Kashina, while Excella's children are Morgan, Minato Ken and Viper Demitri. Now I added Lord Raptor in for fun and to spike things up. The next chapter will have more flashback and continue on Shiva and Chris journey on finding Jill and stopping Wesker. And yes they meet and fight, the Reaper BOW I hate those things do their one kill grab, but I do like their appearance and their theme music haze of horror. So Wesker is alive. Damn it. The rest of the notes are torn out. Chris said with a frown he wanted to know what else happened. So this is Naruto fellow is a friend of Jill. They almost escaped. Shiva said. At least we know Jill's alive, but she's not alone. Chris said, as Shiva nodded. Shiva groaned as her wound from early still hurt. You alright Shiva? Chris asked. I'm fine. Shiva lied. Ken. We need your help. Felicia said calling her half-brother. The young blonde boy nodded and walked forward in front of the group. Can you heal it? Felicia asked. I don't know my healing isn't as strong as daddy's. Ken said. Come on, Ken you can do it. She's a friend of a friend of mommy. Felicia said to the blonde boy. You can do it. You can heal others better than Virgil and Viper. Kashina said. Virgil and the red hair girl known as Viper both look the other way growing bit jealous of young blonde. I'll try. Ken nodded. Ken faced Shiva's back as he touched the wound as he closed his eyes as his siblings cheered him on. Shiva felt something funny as she felt a warm feeling touching her wound. Chris could hear the sound of something hissing. Done, Ken smiled. Shiva removed the bandages and was amazed her wound was gone. Amazing, Shiva said. Way go Ken. See daddy was right about you. Felicia hugged Ken. It was nothing. Ken blushed while rubbing the back of his head while smiling. Do you know where the rest of the pages are? Chris asked the children. Maybe daddy took them out. Or maybe Mr. Wesker did. Or maybe mommy put the rest in her journal. Viper said while thinking. Do you know where your mommy is? Shiva asked Viper. Well right now. She should be in the ruins. She always told us never go there because Red Monster Nest is there guarding a door. The green haired girl said. Well Morrigan it's because the Red Monsters daddy hates remember. And mommy and her friends make the Red Monsters because Mr. Wesker asked them. Viper said. Red Monsters are scary but not as scary as Wesker's guards. Ken said. I wonder if Mr. Batty is back. Morrigan wondered. Batty? Chris asked. Yeah even though his Mr. Wesker's experiment he's also Morgan's pet. Virgil said, while well sweat dropping. Oh, both Chris and Shiva sweat drop as they know just who Mr. Batty was and when the last time they saw him. Chris we Chris cut Shiva off. SHH, he told her. You guys shouldn't stay here much longer. Virgil told the two BSAA agents. Why is that? Chris asked. Because if our dad catches you Mr. Wesker will know. And Mr. Wesker isn't a nice man. Ken said. Yeah he's a bad man a very bad man. Felicia said with a frown. Yeah, I know Wesker and I know he's a very bad man. That why we're here to help Jill and stop him. Chris told the children. If you're here to help mommy then maybe we show them the shortcut. Kashina said as she looked her brothers and sisters. Shortcut? Shiva asked as the children nodded. Yeah we use it all the time. Though last time daddy caught us and sealed it off. But he doesn't know about our secret shortcut. Just be careful out there and Mr. Bug he doesn't company especially he's sleeping. Viper warned the BSSA agents. Who is Mr. Bug? Shiva asked Viper. You'll see. Daddy and him fought a lot way before we were born. He couldn't kill Mr. Bug because Mr. Wesker said so. About a day ago we saw Mr. Bug but he wasn't happy to see us so we ran away that's when daddy caught us. A little warning, don't let Mr. Bug give you a hug. It's very painful, that's what daddy told us. Felicia told Shiva and Chris as they took the information Jill's children told them, Chris took Jill's dairy in hope of finding the other pages. The children didn't mind though, but they begged Chris and Shiva to leave. Do you think they can help daddy? Ken asked his siblings. Who knows, but all we can do is wait like daddy said. Viper said with a sigh. 
Kashina walked over to Felicia and whispered to her sister as Felicia gasped and nodded. Kashina gave Felicia five pieces of pages. Felicia quickly rushed out of the room hoping to caught up with Chris and Shiva. Where did you send Felicia? Viper asked Kashina. There were some pages that mommy torn out. She said something about wanting the truth hidden from Mr. Wesker's eyes and only for daddy and mommy's friends. Kashina told her siblings. Down the hallway. Chris and Shiva stopped when they were halfway down the hall. They heard Felicia called out to their names. Chris told Shiva he'll scout out to see what up ahead, Shiva nod and allow her to see what Felicia wanted. Miss Shiva, Miss Shiva. Felicia yelled. Felicia tripped and fell on her face. Shiva ran over to help Felicia. Ouch, Felicia rubbed her nose. No need to run, I'm here. Is there something else you wanted to tell us? Shiva asked as Felicia nodded. There are mommy's other pages. Mommy kept them hidden even daddy doesn't know about them. Maybe this will help you and Mr. Chris. Please help mommy and daddy, please. Felicia started to tear up, Shiva smiled as the blue-haired girl and patted her head. Felicia let out a purring noise a real cat would made, Shiva sent Felicia on her way back to her brothers and sisters. All alone Shiva looked at the missing pages Jill torn out of her dairy. Jill's torn dairy pages. A month has passed since Naruto and I defeated U11. Naruto went under a new experiment a prototype Wesker created. I hope no one discover this what for I am about to write. Jill was happy to see Naruto again, but however he looked different than he was before. He had a tired look in his eyes as if he hasn't slept in weeks. Naruto wore new clothes, wearing black pants along with a black shirt. Naruto looked clean as if he was given a bath. Naruto what did they do to you? She asked her friend. Naruto didn't say anything, Naruto sighed as he bare his teeth as he tried to break the handcuffs. It didn't take long, but Naruto broke the handcuff as he rubbed his right wrist. Naruto looked at Jill from head to toe. Jill wasn't sure what was going on. She wanted to know what happened while she was in a coma. Naruto suddenly just removed his shirt showing Jill's chest. Jill gasped as she saw a large scar line where his heart was and another scar, but this looked new. It was a deep stab mark. Naruto. She said. I'm sorry Jill. Forgive me. Naruto took one step forward to Jill as Valentine smiled at her friend. Naruto continued walking towards Jill unaware on Naruto's neck there was a red device strapped on the back of his neck. Jill's eyes widened when she felt Naruto's lips press against hers. Jill broke the kiss and blush from the surprise kiss from her new friend. Naruto, stop. This is Jill couldn't find the right words. I know we barely know each other. But we know each history of one of other, well most of it. But Jill I care about you I really do. You're a beautiful woman and you're one of the toughest women I have ever known. I don't want anything bad happen to you, the last thing I want is to lose another friend. So please, Jill. Naruto grabbed Jill's arms, she felt him holding her arms with a strong grip. She wasn't sure if he was afraid of losing her or there was something else going on. Jill looked into Naruto's eyes and saw guilt and loneliness. Jill wasn't sure, but her feelings for Naruto had grown over the time the time they'd been together. Naruto was willingly to risk his life so she could escape, but in the end Jill was the cause of them remaining on the island, she felt her part of blame. But it wasn't like her to leave friend or anyone who is willingly to give up their lives so others may live. Jill would be lying to herself, she didn't have strong feelings for the young man before her. Jill was bit older than Naruto, but that didn't matter. They care for one another be it out love or friendship. Jill closed her eyes and felt him kiss her again. Jill felt Naruto's hold of her loosen as she gave in. His hands moved down to her hips. As the newly couple tasting one another with their wet kiss, Naruto's hands moved down to Jill's perfect round butt cheeks. Opening her eyes with surprise look, but soon calmed down when his hands moved back up to her hips. Feeling her young lover's chest, feeling the scars and past wounds he carried on his body. The kiss was so broken as the two were lost in each other's eyes. Jill fell down on her knees and undid Naruto's pants and reached inside and gasps for she saw pop out before her very eyes. Jill opened her mouth and took Naruto's large 8-inch member into her mouth. Naruto let out soft moan of sounds. Jill bobbed her head up and down. Naruto was bit surprised Jill could handle his size very well. Though Naruto heard Jill gagged few moments. Naruto placed his hands on top of Jill's head and thrust his hips placing him in control over Jill. Jill felt Naruto's hip suddenly became faster, he thrust his hips faster, thrusting his large penis inside her mouth more, Jill felt the head of the penis hit the back of her throat. Jill started to gag she felt it reaching down her throat. Jill grabbed Naruto's thighs and tried to pull away from him, but she couldn't. Naruto's kept Jill in place, but suddenly Naruto let go of Jill, as his penis withdraw from her mouth as Jill gasped for air followed by coughing heavily. Sorry Jill, it felt so good. He blushed, Jill coughed for a while. Jill felt bit weakened from nearly having her air cut off. Naruto got closer to Jill as he stared down at her. She looked up at and saw his eyes they were different. They weren't blue they were red now. 
Jill didn't like the look in his eyes. Naruto grabbed the front part of Jill's battle suit and ripped it open, exposing Jill's breasts out in the opening. Jill covered her breasts, feeling this was getting a bit of out of hand now. Naruto, I think this is enough for now. You're starting to scare me. Jill said, Naruto placed his hands together and perform a quick hand sign. Jill heard something appeared, but she didn't see anything. Naruto back away from Jill for a bit as he started stroking off in front of Jill. Jill didn't try to stare at the young man jerking off in front of her. Naruto's face shone signs of great pleasure, while Jill focused her sights on Naruto's face rather than his large penis. Booming, Naruto said with a moan. Jill closed her eyes as Naruto shot his load of sperm onto Jill. Jill felt his coom load spunk out. Jill felt Naruto's coom all over the chest area battle suit and which were her exposed breasts. Jill sighed as she believed Naruto was done. But when Jill opened her eyes, she gasps only to see for what she saw, a bigger surprise. No way. She thought. Naruto was still hard as if he never came at all. Jill struggled for freedom, Jill kicked Naruto in the balls as Naruto fell down, she jerked her head back hitting the copy as the copy vanished. Though there was no way out of the cell. Naruto was groaning in pain holding his lower area while down on his knees. While on his knees, Jill saw a device on his back. Jill was completely shocked what she saw on Naruto's back, she wasn't sure what the device was. But she knew whatever it was, it was causing Naruto's odd behavior. Naruto recovered from Jill's kick, but he was showing signs he was fighting control. The device on his back flash red. Naruto bare his teeth in pain. Naruto looked over at Jill and backhand as she fell on top of the bed in the cell. Naruto grabbed Jill's legs and easily torn up a piece of the battle suit area between Jill's legs, exposing two private areas. Jill closed her legs. No, Naruto don't please. This isn't right, this isn't you. Fight it, fight it you can win. She told him. Naruto was doing his best to fight it. But no good came of fighting it, Naruto grabbed Jill and threw her against the cell's bars. He grabbed by the throat and threw her to the wall. Jill's back ache in pain from being thrown around by the Uzumaki. Naruto walked over to Jill, looking down at her while the Valentine was groaning in pain. Naruto made another shadow clone to assist him, for he was about to do next to Ms. Valentine. Both Narutos were pulled down their pants. Jill's eyes widened in horror as she shook her head. No, no, please don't. Oh god don't Naruto. She begged him. But her words fell deaf to the Yuzumaki and his clone. The clone grabbed Jill by her arms and held her down to the floor. Naruto fell to his knees and grabbed her hips bringing her closer to him. Jill could feel Naruto's penis head rubbing against the entrance of her womanhood. I'm sorry Jill please forgive me. Jill now knew what he said those words earlier. Unsure if he could control his actions which was of now. With one thrust, the cell was filled with Jill's scream of agony. Ah. Take it out. It's too big. You're too big, you're ripping me open. It hurts. Jill screamed. I'm cooming. He finally gave a sign. Jill couldn't do much at all, the clone kept her arms down, and she was pinned down by Naruto. He was going to coom inside her, and there was nothing anything or anyone can do to stop it. The clone let go of Jill's arms, Jill placed her hands on Naruto's shoulder as she shut her eyes as the end was near. Jill. He shouted her name. Ah, Naruto oh god. Jill screams as her orgasm hit. Naruto dumped his load inside Jill, Jill panting hard, while her face was blushing red from pleasure and embarrassment and shame. She was raped and yet she had an orgasm. Jill could feel Naruto's sperm filling her up, she feel it pouring deep inside of her. The amount of sperm he gave out filling her womb as they were panting together. Naruto rolled over with Jill, having Jill on top of him. Finally it's over. Jill thought. However, Jill spoke too soon. The clone grabbed her round butt cheeks. Jill's eyes as her mouth hang open but nothing came out. Tears filled her eyes up. Ah, God. She screamed. The Naruto shadow clone thrust his penis into Jill's second hole. Her asshole, never have done anal before. Jill didn't like the feeling of having two large size meat packets inside of her. The clone was rougher than the original, smashing his hips driving his penis deeper inside of her asshole. She wanted to scream louder, but Naruto silenced her with a deep kiss. Though she was being sandwich raped by her friend and his clone, Naruto was being gentle when he can while trying to fight for control. I'm going to coom. Both Naruto said. Jill was reaching her second orgasm. Naruto was driving her crazy with pain and pleasure. She knew she won't be walking or standing up straight for a long while. Naruto closed his eyes while frowning, he has bare his teeth only for a moment. Jill touched the left side of Naruto's cheek as she gently run her fingers down the whisker marks on his left cheek. Naruto opened his eyes as Jill saw his eyes were blue once again. Naruto was about to speak, but he was silenced by Jill's kiss. When the kiss was broken, the two fell asleep together. Though he raped me, it was against his will. 
Wesker use a prototype device that can control a person's action even against their will, by what they say or do. The P-30 Wesker calls it and it's one of the hated things I have ever faced. Free from control, Naruto kept away from me. Knowing what he did was his fault though it was against his will. A part of him wanted to mate with me, just not in the way it happened. I was a healthy middle-aged woman, beautiful to many few men eyes. But to Naruto my beauty was special. I wasn't sure if what Naruto said to me was his own words or words Wesker forced him to say. Whatever the case, I love Naruto. Rape or not, these feelings I cannot hide. I have always had feelings for Naruto ever since that day we tried to escape. He grew up as an orphan a rough life, rougher than any of my close friends. Wesker's plan for Naruto to impregnated me with his child, for what reason I wasn't sure at the time, all I care about at the time. Was Naruto okay and will we ever get out of this hellhole? Three days has passed since what happened. Naruto refused to look me in the eye or even talk to me, let alone get near me. Naruto unwillingly force himself upon me damage him, I caught him rarely falling asleep. Whenever I do, I lay near him only for him to wake up to move away from me. My battle suit was torn apart. For three days we stayed in the cell naked together. The embarrassment of being naked has long passed on the first day. I caught Naruto staring at me whenever my back was turned. Naruto couldn't help himself. I was just gorgeous to his eyes. Being naked together alone in a small cell, it was natural a young man like him, was turned on. During the second day, around morning I woke to a sound. Naruto was pleasuring himself in a corner. I would be lying if I wasn't turned on as well. I knew Naruto wanted me and I wanted him, but we knew what they wanted, but even though we wanted each other for own desire. On the fourth day, Naruto and I were given food and water by the guards. Naruto didn't touch his meal and water. He offers them to me though I was full from mines. The fifth day came and we were given guards for 24 hours. The men offer stare at me knowing they had perverted thoughts. However, their stares were short by Naruto's. He offer stare at them while growling like an animal they say. Two days later, Zabel visit us, and that began the real beginning of suffering. What do you want? Naruto spoke with angry voice. Raptor chuckle at first he told the guards to leave the room. Once the guards have left, Raptor grabs a nearby chair and put the chair in front of him as he sat down. Boss has been watching you two for a week now. He's recording everything you two been doing, and I do mean everything. I'm not surprised if he's recording this now. Raptor chuckled. Well both Naruto and Jill felt very unease knowing that Wesker have been watching them nonstop. What do you want? Again Naruto asked Raptor. Nothing mate, just want to talk. Raptor said. About what? Jill asked the B.O.W. human. Their relationship, I know mate got hearts for love there. Sorry about the whole controlling parasite thing. Boss's orders he wanted to see how the prototype works, it worked for a while. Boss is making a new one. One is much stronger than the one you had. Raptor informs the two. Both Naruto looked over his right shoulder and saw Jill looked afraid. I'll kill him. Naruto said with a growl. It's not for you mate. What the boss really wants has really happened. The new prototype will keep things in check. Raptor said while staring at Jill, but his view of Jill was blocked by Naruto. Jill hid her nude body behind Naruto. And what he really wants? Naruto asked Raptor. More like you mate. Your blood is special like love, but unlike her. Your blood has very strong immunity and healing. Your blood saved my life and gave me power. I guess you can say I own you one huh? Who to say what more like you can do? Raptor's words made Naruto worry. So he's plan on cloning me? Naruto glare, but Raptor shook his head. No, try it and it failed a lot. So boss used the other way. Raptor ended his words with a chuckle. The two knew what Raptor was talking about. But however we cannot say for sure. Anyway you two need to come with me now. Raptor got up from the chair and unlocked the cell door. What more blood work? Naruto asked. Nope, you guys need a shower it's been a week has it not. The cell smells like rotten food and something else. The two sweat drop together while the human B.O.W. laugh. Shower room. Raptor and the guard stood outside while Jill and Naruto were alone in the shower. Jill washed her body clean, but while doing so she looked over and saw Naruto completely nude. She was looking at her young friend from head to toe. There were more scars on Naruto's body than she thought. She wasn't sure if they were even scars or not. There were parts of his body that were darker than the other areas of his body. Naruto, she spoke. Old scars. He said. But they. Heal. Yeah I know I healed so much the scar sometime doesn't vanish all the time. My body have scars all over, but they heal up well most of them do. He sighs with a sad look. Jill took a step towards him, but he placed his left hand in her path. Don't. He said. Why? She asked. He didn't say so she took another step. Don't. He said again. But she took another step forward. Please don't. He told her. But Jill didn't listen to him, she took another step forward. 
Naruto's felt something warm against his left hand. He turned to see Jill's hands were holding his left hand. Jill held his left hand against her breasts. Jill looked at him as Naruto stared the beautiful woman beside him. What happens wasn't your fault. You have to accept that. She told him. But a part of me wanted that. He bit his bottom lip. Only because you wanted me, just not in the way it happens. You wanted to make love to me not rape me. Her words reached his heart. She was right and he knew it. He remained silent, his eyes told her he was still unsure. But Jill touched the left side of his face, Naruto closed his eyes. You just have to accept what happened. Okay. He nodded slowly. He opened his eyes and saw her smile. I love you Jill. He said his words made her smile widen. I love you too. Naruto, Naruto's long frown vanished and was replaced by a smile. It wasn't his infamous smile all who knew him by, but it was the smile that Jill loved. The newly couple held each other hands together. Jill, I'll find a way. We'll get out of here I promise you. We'll be free I promise. But for now, knowing each other their feelings was more important right now. Both held each hands tightly not letting go, they know more pain will await them but not alone. Whatever happens they will do it together. It was only a day later Wesker's doctor told me I was pregnant. A boy would be Naruto's and mine's firstborn. Chris if you are reading this, please don't be angry at Naruto. It wasn't his fault and please put a stop to Wesker. End of Jill's torn dairy pages. Shiva was having mixed emotion right now, anger, sad and happiest all together after reading it. Shiva wasn't sure if she wanted to share this with Chris at all. Jill being one of his closest friends of his former team, was nearly wipe out. Shiva. She heard Chris's voice. I'm coming. Shiva yelled. Shiva put the torn pages away and stored them in her notebook. Once Shiva and Chris met up with each other, Shiva saw Chris found a new machine gun and saw many dead soldiers that worked for Wesker. You seem busy. Shiva smirked at Redfield. While you were busy, I ran into some of our friends. Come on let's go we need to find Excella. Maybe she'll tell us what's really going on here. Shiva nod as she agrees with her partner. Shiva and Chris travel through the Tricell facility traveling halfway through the disposal facility. Chris noticed some of the bodies of the Euroboro soldiers lay on the ground dead. None of them were gunned down like the others. But they were stabbed as some were cut in half and others were sliced to piece. What could have done this? Shave said with a frown. Let's not stay around and find out. Chris said, coldly as it sound. Shiva knew her partner was right. Shiva and Chris turned on the power to reach their exit, but however, a new threat came their way. Shiva heard a noise once the power was turned on. The sound of a beast letting out a battle cried. Chris looked at his young partner as the two nodded. Suddenly the two BSAA agents heard a man's shouting voice. Rasengan. The ground quaked for a moment, suddenly Chris and Shiva saw a giant beast being blasted in their pathway. The beast had no head, but its body was bug-like, so bug-like it was close to that of a cockroach a very big one. The giant cockroach grew its missing head back. The B.O.W. cockroach stared at the two and started to walk towards them. So this is Mr. Bug. Shiva said while sweat dropping with Chris. Mr. Bug was a giant B.O.W. Euroboros cockroach, but he had another name. A name very fitting to its appearance and power. Shiva was having mixed emotion right now, anger, sad and happiest altogether after reading it. Shiva wasn't sure if she wanted to share this with Chris at all. Jill being one of his closest friends of his former team, was nearly wipe out. Shiva. She heard Chris's voice. I'm coming. Shiva yelled. Shiva put the torn pages away and stored them in her notebook. Once Shiva and Chris met up with each other, Shiva saw Chris found a new machine gun and saw many dead soldiers that worked for Wesker. You seem busy. Shiva smirked at Redfield. While you were busy, I ran into some of our friends. Come on let's go we need to find Excella. Maybe she'll tell us what's really going on here. Shiva nod as she agrees with her partner. Shiva and Chris travel through the Tricell facility traveling halfway through the disposal facility. Chris noticed some of the bodies of the Euroboro soldiers lay on the ground dead. None of them were gunned down like the others. But they were stabbed as some were cut in half and others were sliced to piece. What could have done this? Shave said with a frown. Let's not stay around and find out. Chris said, coldly as it sound. Shiva knew her partner was right. Shiva and Chris turned on the power to reach their exit, but however, a new threat came their way. Shiva heard a noise once the power was turned on. The sound of a beast letting out a battle cried. Chris looked at his young partner as the two nodded. Suddenly the two BSAA agents heard a man's shouting voice. Basengan. The ground quaked for a moment, suddenly Chris and Shiva saw a giant beast being blasted in their pathway. The beast had no head, but its body was bug-like, so bug-like it was close to that of a cockroach a very big one. The giant cockroach grew its missing head back. The B.O.W. cockroach stared at the two and started to walk towards them. So this is Mr. Bug. 
Shiva said while sweat dropping with Chris. Mr. Bug was a giant B.O.W. Euroboros cockroach, but he had another name a name very fitting to its appearance and power. The Reaper. Chris and Shiva backed away as they took their aim on the giant cockroach B.O.W. The Reaper. The Reaper wasn't quite phased by the bullets of Shiva's handgun and Chris's new submachine gun. Our weapons aren't stopping it. Shiva yell. The Reaper got closer towards Chris and Shiva. It took a swing at the two with its large claws. Chris grabbed Shiva and jumped away from its grasps. Shiva took her chance to shot the Reaper's head. Like before the Reaper grew its head back over time, the creature almost seemed immortal from the damage it took. It walked towards the men with quick steps. The creature was right on their tail. Chris looked around their surroundings. Chris saw there was a traverse conveyor belt. Both Chris and Shiva jumped on it, even though it was moving towards the large fire pit that disposed of anything that fell within it. While Chris and Shiva were running away from the giant cockroach creature, Shiva suddenly tripped when something grabbed her. Shiva looked to see what grabbed her. It was one of the test subjects they perform on. The person was very skinny and gray. Shiva tried to shake the person off, but the person had a strong grip on Shiva's right leg. Let go damn it. Shiva struggled. The reaper was getting closer as so was the fire pit. Shit, Chris ran back down to get Shiva. Chris kicked the test subject in the face as it let go of Shiva. Chris aimed his shotgun at the reaper and brew off not only its head, but also its claws and legs. The reaper was regenerating as it draws closer to the fire pit, just as it seemed like the reaper was about to fall into the fire pit. The conveyor belt stopped. Just freaking great, Chris sighed. Now fully heal the reaper glare at the two BSAA agents. But suddenly out from nowhere a combat knife hit the reaper on the back of its head. The reaper fell down into the fire pit as it let out a loud inhuman death cry. The conveyor belt started to move once again. Come on Shiva let's go before we see any more of those things. Shiva agreed with a big nod. They have never faced anything like that before and hopefully that would be their last encounter. I wonder whose voice that was earlier. Shiva wondered. Unknowing from above on another conveyor belt a man watched the two survive their encounter with the reaper. So that's Chris and Shiva huh? Wonder if they got what it takes to survive what's up ahead. The unknown man said. Few minutes later. After a while the two made it to a door but before they entered the room. They saw someone had left ammo and first aid spray. The two wasn't sure if it was for them or someone carelessly left these items here. After stocking up Chris and Shiva just a large dark room, there were many water tanks filled with unknown experiments. Chris, his partner spoke getting his attention. The two saw what appears to be a naked bald man sitting in a chair. Well, glad you could make it. A woman's voice spoke on the intercom. Chris and Shiva looked around to see where the voice was coming from. Up here you too, the woman said. They looked up to see Excella in a room on the upper floor. Excella smiled at the two she was surprised how much progress they made. Excella where's, Jill? He yelled. Jill, Jill, Jill she sighed you know you're like a broken record, you know that. Just as single-minded as he said. You've spent so long trying to track down Euroboros, well, here. Enjoy. She smiled. Down below the naked man in the chair suddenly woke up. His eyes were reddish-orange, he slowly walked toward the two. While walking towards them, tentacles bust from his arms and back as it slowly wrapped around his body. So Euroboros is the new B.O.W. And you're planning on selling it to terrorists. Shiva glared at Excella. But guess, but no. Well it does resemble the B.O.W.S. based on the progenitor virus. I have no intention of selling it to terrorists. She explained. Then what are you using for? Chris asked. The naked man's body started to ache up only for the tentacles to retract back inside his body. His reddish-orange eyes became blue. Evolution, it's a philosopher's stone, one that will choose who's worthy of it, through DNA who shall proceed to the next stage, my darling's blood, my vision and his combined, now made a reality. Excella explained. Evolution. What are you talking? Shiva looked confused. Oh, you'll find out soon enough. Everyone will. Excella turned her back on them. Does explain the children you lock away. Chris asked Excella. Excella's eyes widened in shock, how did they know about the children unless? Where are they? What did you do my children? She yelled. Both Shiva and Chris smiled at one another and gave a nod. We found your nest, your children sweet kids they are. Too bad. Chris misleads Excella to think they dispose of the children when they found the playroom. You're dead. Excella gave them a venomous glare. Chris. Shiva noticed the naked man's body started to ache up as the tentacles bust out of his body consuming him, transforming him into the tentacles monster they fought way back in the beginning of their mission. Excella rushed off in a hurry, Shiva saw a great look of worry on Excella's face. Shiva also saw a masked cloak person following Excella. Excella wait. Chris shouted. Warning a biohazard threat has been detected. Cleanup personnel must incinerate all contaminated materials. 
The doors within the room suddenly locked due to the biohazard threat. Chris took out his grenade launcher and start firing the equipped flame rounds at the Euroboros monster. While it was suffering from being burned by Chris's attack, Shiva took out her handgun aimed at the large red orbs that exposed the weak spots of its arms limbs. But suddenly the Euroboros BOW launch a tried arm at Chris, it gave Chris a quick sucker punch. Son of bitch, Chris cursed the BOW. While Chris was on the floor recovering from being sucker punch, Shiva turned her attention on Chris just for one moment. The Euroboros BOW reached its left arm and grabbed Shiva by her leg and tripped her up. The black Euroboros BOW monster pulled Shiva toward it slowly, Shiva felt its tentacles wrapping around her leg. Shiva. Chris gasped. He saw a red barrel in the room. He kicked it down and pushed it towards the monster. And blasted with his shotgun. The red barrel exploded. the BOW let go of Shiva. We got to find a faster way to kill this thing. Shiva said while panting. Flamethrower now fully charged. They heard the computer's voice. The two looked back to see at the entrance of the room to the right was a flamethrower strapped to the wall for fueling. They weren't sure if it was luck or someone was looking out for them, now wasn't the time to think about it. Chris grabbed the flamethrower and took his aim on the BOW, blasting it with full flame blast. The BOW howled in pain as it felt its body being melted by the hot flames. The BOW looked at Shiva and once again tripped her up, but this time it grabbed her by both her legs, Shiva dropped her handgun. Chris stopped his attack, he didn't want to burn his partner to death. The BOW was smart, Chris gave it that, using Shiva as a shield. Shiva was being hung upside down, she felt the black tentacles slowly rising up to her upper body. Ah stop it, don't touch me there, ugh. Shiva let out a soft moan as she struggled. Shiva catch. Chris threw his handgun at Shiva. She caught it and took her head at the head of the BOW. One blast to a headshot was enough for the BOW drop her where she fell, Chris blast full flame charge at the BOW as he burned it to death. The BOW screamed as it died. It fell to the ground its body melted into liquid. Once the BOW was killed the doors unlocked themselves. Chris was out of fuel for the flamethrower, he placed it back on the wall to charge up. Shiva you okay? He asked his young partner. I'm fine, just ugh that was too close. She sighed. Looks like he had a thing for you Shiva. He joked. Very funny, she stared at him. Suddenly Shiva gasped she quickly got off the floor and started moving like crazy. Shiva what's wrong? Chris asked. Shiva reached into the back of her pants and pulled out a single tentacle and threw it on the floor and stomped on it. Bessie really liked you. Again she stares at her partner. Ugh, tentacles why did it have to be tentacles? Shiva shook her head then her whole body. The feeling of being grabbed by it sent chills down her spine. Come on let's go. He pat her on the back. Shiva nodded, she gave Chris his handgun back and picked up hers. About an hour of traveling through the base, after fighting their way through the number of armed guards and other B, the two finally made it to the ruined spot the children spoke of. Shiva noticed Chris was had his guard up. He looked around the area with sharp eyes. Chris what's wrong? She asked. Remember beware of the red monsters. I think they're lickers here. Chris said. Lickers? She asked. The red monsters we dealt with a while back. My sister Claire encountered these things during her time in Raccoon City. She called them lickers because of their long tongues. He explained to Shiva. Your sister comes up strange names for monsters she encounter. Shiva sweat dropped. Chris smirked at his partner. Claire said these things don't have eyes so from now on we have to be quiet. Chris whispered to Shiva. Suddenly the two heard a loud gunshot nearby. Right after the gunshot was heard, they could see the sound of lickers roaring. Chris and Shiva looked around and saw the lickers were coming out from holes in the ceiling and sideway of the cavern. Chris and Shiva stood very still, making sure the lickers didn't hear them. The liquor crawled down to the floor where the two were. But suddenly someone snapped their fingers, and in an instant the large group of lickers stopped in their tracks. The unknown person snapped their fingers again, the lickers sat down on like loyal dogs. Chris and Shiva weren't sure what was going on. Someone was helping them hit that person they had no clue. I would go on if I were you. The boss is just up ahead he can't wait to meet you. A dark voice laughed. The bridge was lowered down, Chris and Shiva nod their heads to one another and ran off before whoever it decided to let the liquors dispose of them. As Chris and Shiva ran across the bridge, standing on top of catwalk above where the two were, the unknown person was none other than Lord Raptor. Raptor was sitting by himself tuning his guitar. Why did you let them go? A woman said to Raptor. Boss's orders he wanted those two to make to meet the big man. He said. So what you doing afterwards? Raptor asked the woman. If you're asking about that date, for the tenth time Raptor, no. The woman said. Ah, no need to be cold-hearted baby, you can't blame me for trying. Raptor chuckled at his partner. The woman let out a deep sigh before she departed. 
The woman got a call, the woman answered it and gave a nod. Where you heading off to now? He asked. Excella just call me, she want me to look after the children. She wants them to double up the guards. The woman explained to her undead partner. Ah those two must have found the kids, guess she bit protected of the kids. I don't blame her, cute little pack that they are. You coming? The woman asked. Raptor quickly joined the woman's side. You can send your pets back in their holes. Raptor snapped his fingers sending the large group of lickers back into their lair. Elsewhere Chris's and Shiva's location. The two finally caught up with Excella. Excella was in a large room the area took place was the ruined temple of some unknown tribe. Excella Joan. Stop right there. Shiva shouted. Excella stopped right in her track, she turned around with a small smile on her face. Bravo. She clapped her hands I see you two are still alive. Damn it, where's Jill? Chris growled. Maybe I'll tell you, maybe I won't. You had me worry I thought the children were in danger. But now I have nothing to worry about. You two are going to be a real pain. Excella smirked. Suddenly out from nowhere was the cloak-masked person. The cloak-masked figure jumped between Chris and Shiva, she roundhouse kicked Shiva to the ground. Chris fired his handgun at the cloak figure's face, only to knock off the person's mask. Shiva joined Chris's side as the two fired their guns at the cloak figure. The cloak figure backflip while dogging their bullets with ease. Stop playing around we need answers. Chris told the cloak figure. You hadn't changed at all Chris. A familiar voice said to Chris. Chris is widened in shock as his fear came true. Albert Wesker was alive. Wesker wore black leather pants that match with this leader shirt along with black gloves. And like always Wesker wore his trademark sunglasses. Wesker. You are alive. Chris glared at his nemesis. So this Wesker. Shiva looked at Chris, Redfield nod his head. We last met at the Spencer estate, wasn't it? Well, isn't this one big family reunion huh? He chuckled. I thought you would happier to see us. Wesker walked over to the cloak figure. Us? Chris looked confused. So slow to catch on. Wesker pulled the hook down exposing who the cloak figure was. J. Jill. Jill it's me Chris. Chris couldn't believe it, Jill Valentine his good old friend back in the day of STARS was still alive, but however this wasn't a moment of joy. That's Jill. Are you sure? Shiva asked Chris. The one and only. Wesker smirked. Jill removed her cloak to show her battle suit. Jill quickly kicked Chris in the chest and bounced off him as she flew into air for a moment. Shiva took her aim at Jill but missed by an inch. Jill ran towards Shiva and headbutted her. Jill then ran towards Chris and kneed him in the stomach, Chris fell down to one knee. Jill held her right hand back as if she was about to punch him. Shiva aimed her gun right up behind Jill's head. But Wesker pushed Shiva away from Jill. Jill punched Chris in the face. Jill backflip away from them and joined Wesker's side as Excella escaped while they were fighting. Now let's finish this once and for all. Damn you Wesker, Chris cursed him. I think the odds are fair, two on two. Right Jill. Wesker looked at the blonde valentine. Jill looked back at Wesker for a moment before she nods her head. Wesker cracked his knuckles, and his next seven minutes, seven minutes is all I can spare to play with you. Chris fired his handgun at Wesker only for him to dodge it. Poor performance indeed. He mocked Chris. Chris ran over to a steel door while firing at Wesker. But again and again Wesker dodged the bullets with ease. Your future hinges upon this fight. Wesker kicked Chris through the steel door. Shiva ran through the door and helped Chris up as the two ran up the upper floor to avoid Wesker and Jill. We'll never win like this. Time to change tactics. Chris told Shiva. We should hide, it's the only way we can gain the upper hand in this fight. Shiva told Chris. There's no point in hiding. Wesker laughed you're merely postponing the inevitable. Chris hide behind a corner while Shiva went off ahead to make sure Jill wasn't gonna catch them by surprise. You can't hide forever. Wesker yelled, Chris could tell Wesker was very close. Chris grabbed his stun rod he kept on his side. He turned it on. Poor deluded Chris. How you so love your precious self-righteousness. Wesker walked forward unknowingly didn't see Chris. Smack buzz. Ah. Wesker fell down on his knees after getting the shock of his fucking life. Chris punched Wesker in the face, again in the face, then few japs to the gut, before Chris finish off his combo, striking Wesker's face knocking off his sunglasses. Chris shook his wrists damn what's his face made out of steel. Chris ran off after seeing Wesker getting off the ground. Wesker noticed his sunglasses were now broken. He threw them aside good thing he had another pair. Wesker noticed he was bleeding from the lip, he smart to see how little damage Chris could do physically. Wesker ran after Chris quick such speed ah there you are. Wesker threw a punch at Chris, but luckily Chris dodged just in time, Wesker rammed his right fist into the wall. Wesker tried to pull out, but he was stuck for a moment. 
Chris used this moment to strike Wesker again with the stun rod and perform another fist combo on his face. Ugh damn it. Wesker saw Chris ran off again as he withdraw his right fist from the wall. Here I am here giving you my precious little time and you waste it by running around. Wesker looked around for Chris then suddenly he saw someone toss a flash grenade at him. Well Wesker was covering his eyes even though he was wearing sunglasses. Chris ran towards Wesker and hit him with a powerful uppercut which knocked Wesker off his ass self-righteous fools. Wesker groaned in pain. Wesker ran away from Chris, Chris ran after Wesker only to make it back where the fight started. Chris saw Shiva and Jill was fighting in a game of CQC, when Jill saw Wesker at run up the stairs certain in the room, Chris and Shiva ran after Wesker. There the two saw a hidden elevator behind a stone wall which opened before Wesker. I expected more of a challenge after all this time Chris. How disappointing. He shook his head. You didn't seem disappointed after I knock your block off. Chris gripped his fists. Suddenly Wesker got a call from someone. Yes. What is it? He asked. Oh. The two went after Wesker. Wesker stop. Chris yelled. Wesker let out a disappointed sigh as he looked at the two. All focus on him but completely forgetting about Jill. Again Shiva got roundhouse kicked by Jill, but this time, Shiva got kicked into a wall. Jill elbow Chris in the stomach and trip him up forcing him down on one knee. Jill wrapped her arms around Chris's head, ready to snap his neck. Shiva recovered quickly and aimed at both Wesker and Jill. Jill, come on snap out of it. It's me Chris. Come on. Don't you remember me? Don't you remember what we've been through together? Stars, Barry, Rebecca, Brad, Richard does any of it sound familiar to you? Come on Jill Valentine. He tried his best to get Jill to remember. Nice try Chris. But now that your partner has arrived, I'll leave you two to catch up. Wesker turned his back with an evil smile. Jill, Shiva struggled off the ground as Jill's kick nearly took the wind out of her. What about your kids? What about Felicia? Chris told me you're not this type of person. Shiva said. Chris felt Jill's grip around his neck started to loosen. Chris. I I. I'm. Jill said, she let go of him. Jill took few steps back, she shook her head. She held her head while baring her teeth. Remarkable. Still resisting at such an advanced stage. Commendable, yet futile. You can try like he, but you're not strong like him Jill. Suddenly the hidden elevator doors open as someone took a step out. Speak of the devil. No more time for games Chris. I've got work to do. Have fun watching Jill suffer. Wesker smirked. Keep Jill's company at bay while I work. And remember what happens if you don't. Wesker said to the man. The unknown man nods his head. The unknown man was tall, his hair was spiky blonde. He had three whisker line marks on each cheek on his face. His eyes were red malice. He wore black t-shirt with dark blue pants with black boots, he wore fingerless gloves. Wait what you did to her Chris ran towards Wesker, but the blonde haired man blocked Chris's path and thrust punched Chris into a wall. Jill grabbed the neck of her battle suit and ripped it open, exposing a large glowing device on Jill's chest. What's that on her chest? Shiva said. Whatever it is we have to get it off her. Chris knew it won't be easy, especially that Jill had extra support on her side. Shiva looked at the man from head to toe and his appearance was very familiar. Is that Naruto? Shiva stared. Shiva and Chris stick together side by side. As the blonde hair man was indeed Naruto, the same Naruto from Jill's journal. He looked much older now, but judging from seeing him holding Jill's left hand, they were still very much a couple, partners until the end. Jill had a crazy look in her eyes. Naruto held Jill's left hand tighter. Jill looked at Naruto as he looked at her with a small smile. Jill calmed down a bit as she slightly lowered her head, but kept her glare fix on Chris and Shiva. So you're Chris. Well let's see if you got what it takes to beat us. He turned his attention on the two BSAA agents. You can speak. Both Shiva and Chris looked surprised. I'm human too you know. So yeah I can talk, but Jill right now he looked at his partner and lover, if I let go of her hand, she'll rip you apart with her bare hands. Trust me I've seen her in action and I have the scars to prove it. He said in a calm voice. You don't have what she got do you? Shiva asked Naruto. No, that crap doesn't work on me anymore. He said with a trouble looked. Help us save Jill. We can stop Wesker together. Chris told the Uzumaki. As much as I would love to help you ripped Albert a new one. I can't I got orders and with those orders I must do or else those I love will suffer for my failure. I'm sorry. Naruto frowned, he closed his eyes, but reopened them as his face had a serious look now. This can't be happening. Shiva frowned. Chris and Shiva versus Naruto and Jill. Sad but true. Chris nod. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.